All right, our plan today is to work on assignment one. And so what I did is I pulled, this is our first, you know, portfolio assignment. I pulled my folder from documents and I've made it very recognizable. I actually took my shape composition and made that the icon. Um, I did some research why the icons were showing up so fuzzy and that's because of this new operating system, Mojave. And there's an easy solution to that. So if you wanna make your cartoon jumble, your icon, for instance, this one. The, the difference from past operating systems is you just have to make sure it's a perfect square. So when you select it, this is a PNG, so it's floating, but I'm gonna hold down shift as I select around it, and that will give me a perfect square. And then because my image itself is not perfect square, I might need to do a smaller segment of it. So this will just demo it for you. And then you hit Command C to copy it. And then you can go to the folder itself, go to Git Info, click on the icon and paste it in. And now we'll have a nice crisp icon instead of the blurry ones we were getting. Now, I don't, I don't mind that icon. My problem is I've been saving several of these. So in my documents, I have lots of <laughs> cartoon jumble icons already. So I might go for something a little different. And you can customize your icon any way you like. So I might use my little Lego guy and I might hold down shift, select a perfect square of this. Command C to copy it. This is completely optional. And you can just change these folder icons as much as you like. Right. And that gives me, a, it's nice and crisp and it has that little offset that I built into it. So it will show up very easily. So now that I'm in my folder, I wanna to go to assignments, assignment one. I've already started my sketches, right? So I'm gonna open that up. And remember, we want this semester to drag your file down to the Photoshop version that's in your doc. Because we, for the most part, want to use Photoshop 2018, unless that's not an option on your computer. And in my sketchbook, I chose a theme. It's going to be a nautical theme. It's going to have an ocean in it, storm clouds, a towers made of coral, big rocks. I wanted to throw in some rutabagas. The time is going to be kind of morning, so I want kind of the morning light and maybe some floating mountains in there. And so the next task is to find reference that's larger than 3000 pixels, really on both dimensions. And then looking at that reference, I'm gonna sketch my own compositions. One that's landscape format, wider than it is tall. One that's portrait format, taller than it is wide. So next we go to references. And already I can use those search terms and make folders, right? So I know I want to search for something that could be used as coral towers, right? And then I wanna, look for coral and I want those images I'm just showing you here to be in pixels at least 3000 or as close to 3000 as possible right and that allows you to see them if I view them at a hundred percent right they should take up pretty much four times the size of your screen right that allows us to print really up to about 11 by 14 inches at, at a, a high quality print resolution of 300 to 350 pixels per inch. So we're looking for image quality at that size. Now, even if the colors are weird, this is kind of a black light coral from an aquarium, this black background makes this very easy to select out, right? And then we're gonna learn how to change colors and to change lighting but we, we need to get good selections. So this, this could be a useful resource. And you'll notice I have a lot of different coral references here, all of which are nice and large and clean. And so how do you get those? And th those will inform my sketch. Well, we, we do a Google image search. That's a good place to start, right? But the problem is then you have to go to tools, then you have to go to size and you have to go to large. And then you have to hover over it until you can find something like this one that is larger than 3000 pixels. And then you have to right click and you say open image in new tab to make sure it's not a broken link. 
like this one is. You see how blurry that is. And so that's not a good one. So you can waste a lot of time, unfortunately, with the, the way Google Image Search is set up currently, which is frustrating because it didn't used to be set up this way. So I actually recommend another site. And if you go to our links page in a canvas, I've linked it there right underneath our YouTube channel. And it's pixabay.com. And Pixabay is a curated Creative Commons open image search uh, resource. The only problem is you do have to join and sign in in order to get the highest resolution images. But it's free to join. You just can use any email address. You don't need to have them send you anything. And it's, it's worthwhile. So what Creative Commons opens means, <laughs> means, so we can look at anything. These are some recently uploaded ones, is that they are free for commercial use and there's no attribution required. So we can use it as is without ever saying who made it or crediting it, right? It's not good form to say that we made it <laughs> um, if I just use it as is. So we're gonna be taking references from here and then transforming them into our own vision that we can say we made. But the, the real benefit of this is not only that the Creative Commons open, it's that if you look under the free download, they will have images that are large enough. And so you choose the largest image size and you hit download. And this is a curated site. So not everything that people upload gets allowed on. It has to meet certain quality standards. And so you're not going to find any broken tags or, or blurry photos. All right. So to search, let's look at the things I don't have, like rutabagas. Google, which will have thousands of rutabaga options. <laughs> but not of good quality. This only has one page of them. It has 10 free images to use of rutabagas or something related. And so then I just right click, open them in a new tab, and then just download them. Right? And that's almost 6,000 pixels by 3,500. And then they're going to go right into your downloads folder. I like using Chrome because it shows you that they download. So instead of going to the desktop or instead of dragging and dropping them, you have to open up your downloads folder and then move them in to your reference. But now I know all of these are, are good quality. So I've got some rutabagas. But what if rutabaga is too specific? Maybe I want turnip. And think how I can use these as landscape elements, right? Especially in the ocean, these kind of floating bodies. This one's kind of nice. And there's two pages. So you'll just waste less time in my experience doing this. And I will use Pixabay for professional jobs because they are Creative Commons open and I don't need to worry about attributing if I use this source material. Now, interesting, you're going to find things sometimes that weren't explicitly on your list, but you might as well download them. And maybe they make it into your sketch, like these leaves, right? Just because that's kind of a beautiful point of view that could be kind of the foreground of a landscape. Ah, but notice... This is about the minimum size you'll ever find, and that's a little small. So I'm going to just go ahead and not, not deal with this one. So for the most part, they're larger than 3,000 pixels, but sometimes not. And it's really handy if you can get something you like that's on a black background or an easy to, like a green screen kind of background, easy to edit out from. Ooh, this is weird, this sludge and slime. Ah, and it's nice and big. Let's get that. All right. So I, I like to be surprised by what I find, which is why I'll throw a, a search term like rutabagas in there. And then something like morning light. Well, let's do storm clouds first. It's helpful if you spell it right. <laughs> so this is where Pixabay really shines. Just lots and lots of, of high quality photography. Then I think, well, what would be good for 
the sky of the composition I'm working with. I want it to be moody, look like it's in the morning, and I can composite together a few different skies. But it's nice to have a horizon in there too. And there, there are going to be a lot of options. Some of these are already composites. And so I'm just looking for kind of pure elements as much as possible. And I don't want ones with huge waves because I don't want those waves to feel like they should be moving. Now, once you've made your fantasy landscape, you might decide you want to upload it to your account in Pixabay and offer it for other people to use. And so I'll often do that with this assignment. And what's nice is just like this, if someone downloads it, you get to see like how many downloads you have, right? They get to leave comments. Uh, they'll sometimes give you some money, you know, just because they're grateful for it. And you link it to a PayPal account. And that's nice. It's, it's the generosity of the design world. So instead of selling it, you're just offering it up for free. But sometimes if they use it for like a, a calendar, a book cover, you know, things like that, um, they'll give you a little something. And if they're European, they'll give you a lot more than if they're American. That's just what I've noticed. I think I already got it. All right. Now, the trick is not to get seduced by the things that look cool, right? So I could say, oh, wow, this image looks amazing. Because then if I think it looks too cool, then I'm just going to kind of use it and not mess with it too much, right? These are just components for you. They're puzzle pieces for your own vision. So don't get so seduced by your reference that you don't have your own ideas. And then the last thing I was going to search for, let's move all these storm clouds in. Add these extra rutabagas in. This is kind of a weird oddity. I like it though. And now I'll just do some morning light images. And I'm really just looking for lighting. So kind of a directionality of lighting. So something like this, a light source that I can use, but it needs to be pretty vague. Now another really good resource of public domain images that are high resolution is anything that our federal government produces. And NASA and the Hubble Space Telescope, you know, produces some really good ones. So all of that is, is public domain because it's paid for with tax money. We'll talk more about public domain images and Creative Commons later. But don't settle for low resolution. You want 3000 pixels or more. And there are 33 pages of morning light, you know. But this is a school project and we don't have forever. So I wanna get no more than, than five images in each of these kind of categories. And they're just to inform my sketch. Okay, so now that I have all those, and you can get to Pixabay anytime by going through our course links, right? And if you don't have Photoshop, you can use our course links and go to PhotoP to play with what we're learning and what I'm demoing right now. And then all the demos are on our YouTube channel. Right? So your one-stop shop, the links of our class. And our goal is to make a fantasy landscape. See that people have done this before. They're taking multiple photos, putting them together into one believable scene. That's the goal. Foreground, middle ground, background. Sometimes done better than other times, right? But we get to create the scene ourselves. And we might even contribute our own at the end of this. So now sketching. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a tablet for this. I'm gonna move my morning light reference into my folders. And now I know all of these folders are high enough resolution to use. 